Hello everybody! Welcome to another week of Makers Monday. I am Anastasia Redloff, aka Stamp of Blondie, and I am back from vacation. I spent the last two weeks exploring Norway and Iceland on the Stampin' Up! incentive trip, and I had such an amazing time but I am excited to be back here crafting with you each week with live step-by-step -step stamping. All right, so let me just make sure that I am live here on Facebook. If you're watching, make sure to comment, say hi, let me know that you are watching this week. If you are watching live over on my YouTube channel where I am live there as well, make sure to comment, say hi, I can see all of your comments on here. So perfect to be able to uh, say hi to everybody. Looks like I am good to go on both of my channels. So hello everybody. Um, if you're watching this on replay, make sure to comment. Let me know where you were able to watch from and I hope you are able to join me live next week. All right, well, uh, like I said, um, the past two weeks I was on the Stamp It Up incentive trip uh, with a beautiful trip to Norway on a cruise, cruising the Norwegian fjords. This was the incentive trip that I earned back in uh, August of last year, so almost eight months in the making for this trip. So I was uh, very excited to be able to finally go on it after uh, my first incentive trip that I earned uh, last year, well, two years ago, got canceled because of COVID. So I was actually excited to attend my first slash second Stampin' Up! incentive trip. All right, uh, today I'm gonna be creating three projects featuring the Little Monkey stamp set and coordinating punch. This is a bundle from our annual catalog and it is the perfect stamp set to create some fun, cute, and um, just wild projects. All right, let me go ahead and swap the camera since I've been gone for so long. I've got a couple quick announcements and then we'll jump right into our projects this week. All right, the first is coming up this weekend is my annual Stampin' Bogo uh, sale. So this is a buy one, get one sale, meaning you get to shop from all of my retired items and um, you shop from the Stampin' Up! annual catalog and then all of the retired items for equal value are yours to take home for free. Hence the buy one, get one. You buy one from the catalog, get one from my retired stash. Now you can choose anything from stamp sets, dies, punches, designer series paper, cardstock, ink pads, um, embellishments, ribbon, everything in between. And no matter where you live, you can participate in Stamp and Bogo. So if you are local to me here in Tucson, Stamp and Bogo will be this coming Saturday starting at 10 a.m. It's 10 a.m. to noon. I ask that please no early birds. This is a very popular event, but I ask that no early birds come. Um, so Stamp and Bogo will be uh, in person here in Tucson on Saturday. Now, if you are not in Tucson or you cannot make the Saturday event, Stampin' Bogo will be virtual on starting Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Yeah, we're on Pacific time right now. So uh, how it'll work, there is a special Facebook group that I have set up for BOGO and um, at 9 a.m. I will post all of the items broken up by categories. So there'll be a stamp set category, designer series paper category, and so on and so forth. You'll go through there, Everybody, everything is assigned a number. You'll write down the numbers that you want, fill out my form, send the form to me, and then you'll have 48 hours to place your catalog order for the amount of the BOGO items that you chose. Um, once you have that, you have the option to pick up the items here in Tucson or have them shipped, and that is Stampin' BOGO. So um, I take extremely great care of all of my products pieces so stamp sets will be in amazing um, order. Your designer series paper, I have so much paper, embellishments, everything you can think of um, will be available for Stampin' Bogo. So this Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. 
in Tucson or virtually online starting Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Um, I will do a separate post later today about the Facebook group where this will be hosted at. Um, so it's not on my Stampin' page that you're watching right now. It is a separate group because then I can post albums for all the different items and then I don't clog up this page. So Stampin' BOGO, if you have any questions about BOGO or how it works, feel free to post in the comments here on this video and I can answer any of those or you can post in the Facebook group as well. So BOGO buy one get one is coming up this weekend virtually and online. All right. So next up, we have the Stampin' Up! Starter Kit promotion. So if you have ever thought about joining Stampin' Up! and not just for teaching classes, if you are looking to get an amazing discount on all your future orders, this is the best time to join Stampin' Up! You get $155 in your choice of products for only $99. So that is um, an additional $30 more than is normal. Uh, now, when you join Stampin' Up!, there is no requirement to teach classes, host events, do Facebook Lives. You can be what I like to call a happy shopper and purchase items for yourself at a discount. Now I accept all type of demonstrators on my team, anywhere from those that are wanting to build their crafting empire to those that are just wanting to get discount. Now I will confess, I started this out as just a way to get discounts on my products that I wanted. Um, I joined Stampin' Up! for their coordinating items with their stamp pads to their designer series paper and cardstock where everything coordinated with each other. And I had no intentions of teaching classes, hosting events, or earning an incentive trip. So the Starter Kit Plus promotion is the best time to join Stampin' Up! to get more bang for your buck. You have um, six months to be able to create your quarterly quota, which is $300. Um, if you don't earn that, that's okay. You can uh, drop and you owe nothing to Stampin' Up! So if you have ever thought about joining the Stampin' Blondie team, we have an amazing group of demonstrators from all across the nation. I host events in person and virtually for those that aren't here in Tucson. Um, and we just have an amazing group of uh, demonstrators and all skill levels. No matter if you are a beginner stamper to the most advanced crafter in the world, um, everybody is welcome on the Stampin' Blondie team. So this runs until June 30th. If you have any questions about uh, becoming a demonstrator, what it entails to be a demonstrator, don't let the name demonstrator uh, deter you. You don't have to demonstrate anything. Uh, but I would love to have you on the Stampin' Blondie team. If you have any questions, please reach out to me and I will be happy to answer any questions you have before uh, joining our team. All right, next up is our designer series paper sale. So um, from now until the end of June, um, all of our regular designer series papers are 15% off. Now this is not including our specialty designer series paper. So any of our foil papers, glimmer papers, luster papers, those aren't included, but our regular designer series paper is. Now, if you are kind of having a, uh, a decision-making process of how you want to choose all the Desire Series papers, there's so many different options. How do I choose which ones? I am hosting my annual catalog paper share. So this, I have not announced this yet. I am fine-tuning all those little details. I worked on it quite a bit yesterday and I just have to review, do one final review and then this will be posted my annual catalog paper share. I've offered paper shares in the past. So what exactly is a paper share? If you have ever been to a restaurant and you look at the menu and you say, oh, I love four of these different desserts. I wish I could just have a little taste of all four of those. That is what a paper share is. It is a little taste of all of our designer series papers that we offer. Now with the paper share, there is three options. There is the designer series paper only, the specialty designer series paper only, or option three, I gotta have it all, the designer series paper and specialty papers 
together. So um, I've offered this in the past with my mini catalogs. This is the first time I'm doing it with the annual catalog. It has been a great success with the mini catalog. So uh, the annual catalog is sure to be a great option for those that are looking to get just a little taste of our designer series papers. It's great for those that want to budget your purchases. If you want to try a designer series paper out and you just want to see what it looks like first before investing in the full package, designer series paper share is perfect for you. So more details on this. I just want to make sure all my math and everything is correct. Uh, and I will be putting this out probably tomorrow. So um, make sure to keep an eye out on your email for our uh, newsletter that I have when I announce all of my upcoming events and classes. All right, today we are going to be creating three projects featuring the Little Monkey stamp set and coordinating a punch. Now this is found on page 52 of our annual catalog and um, this is not part of a suite so there is not any designer series paper that coordinates with this. So it's kind of a fun way to mix and match designer series papers to go along with this bundle. So here is the stamp set. It is um, a photopolymer stamp set, 15 stamps all together. Um, if you follow me, you know I love a stamp set that has both the images and sentiments to go along with it. So we have the littlest monkey here. And then one of these images, this one right here actually, coordinates with the monkey builder punch. Now this builder punch also has a punch for the banana, um, the monkey face, and then some little eyeballs to actually build up the monkey. Now how I'm gonna use this punch today is I'm gonna stamp the monkey and then punch it out. So all these little uh, four little pieces that are down here on the punch, I'm not gonna be using those. I'll just be using the main monkey part of the stamp or of the punch, um, but this is the uh, monkey, little monkey bundle uh, on page 52 right here of our annual catalog. All right, our three projects today feature a variety of different colors. So here is our first project that we're going to make. Now this card says, I'm bananas about you. And you can see we have the little monkey that I used the punch on. Our second project just says, just swinging by to say hi with this little hanging monkey, super cute. And then the last project, Little Monkey, where we're gonna die cut, or uh, punch out these two monkeys here. So super cute projects, uh, anybody can use a punch. So no matter what skill level you are, uh, it, punches are very, very easy to be able to work with, no matter your skill level. Now don't forget, on my website, stampinblondie.com, I have my free project PDF tutorial. This has all of the item names, item numbers, prices, and the dimensions of the three projects that we are gonna create here today. So don't forget, there's a backside as well. And then, if you are wanting to create these little monkey projects yourself, I offer these in a class to go. So here is what the packets will look like for you to be able to create your projects. It has all of the cardstock and designer series paper project pieces for you to be able to create your projects with me. Now, all you have to do is place an order of $35 or more on my website using the specialty host code that I have right here at the bottom. Uh, place the order by this coming Thursday, the end of the day, midnight, Arizona time, and I will send you the project pieces for this week's projects. Now, if you place an order of $50 or more, you will receive our embellishment of the week, which is a roll of linen thread, full roll. Now, I love linen thread because this really goes with everything. Um, it is probably my most used ribbon slash thread that I use on all of my projects. And um, I love it because it's easy to work with and once, like I said, goes with everything. So $35 order prior to shipping and tax and I'll send you the project pieces this week, $50 or more, and I will send you including um, a roll of linen thread. Now, before I jump into our projects, like I mentioned, I was on the Stampin' Up! Incentive trip uh, in Norway this past two weeks. And um, 
a part of the trip is to create swap projects. So I created 26 of the same projects and I received 26 different projects back. And I wanted to show you one of the projects that I received that featured the little monkey bundle. Now, unfortunately, the creator of this project did not include any identifying information. I reached out onto our uh, Stampin' Up! Trip Achievers Facebook page and I didn't receive any response. So if this is your project card, um, I apologize for not being able to give you credit, uh, but it's such a fun card, I wanted to be able to show you this. So here is the project that they created. And this uh, type of technique is called a waterfall card. So what it is, is here's our little monkey and then you pull the tab here and it has all of these different designs on the front. And then you can just close it up. And it fits in a regular size envelope, um, but it's this fun little technique to be able to show four different panels of these little monkeys here. Now the inside of the card just opens and you can write anything you want on the inside. Um, I'm thinking about doing this project type in a future Makers Monday. So if you wanna see this, comment below, let me know. Um, but this is a really fun waterfall card that I wanted to show you guys. Like I mentioned, unfortunately I can't give credit where credit is due, but if you created this project, I love it. So thank you for creating such a fun swap card. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. Um, my June Club Craft and Create. So if you are wanting to register for June's Club Craft and Create, the deadline for this is coming up this Thursday, June 8th. So we are featuring the So Refreshing stamp set this month. And here are the cards that we will be making. Um, Club Craft and Create offers a uh, in-person or a virtual via Zoom class. If you aren't able to attend the Zoom class, it is recorded. We'll make eight of the projects seen here, two of each different design. You receive a full package. These are the adhesive backed sparkle gems and a full roll of the black and white gingham ribbon, as well as um, some designer series paper and project pieces as well. So uh, the registration information is in the link in the description of this video. June Club Craft and Create deadline is this coming Thursday if you're wanting to um, register for that. I think I have three in-person spots available here in Tucson, um, unlimited of course via virtual. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So our first project that we're gonna create is this right here. Let me make sure I get that in frame so you can see it. We've got some fun embossing down here at the bottom with a lemon lime twist and pecan pie designer or er, cardstock. So let's go ahead and create our first project of the day. Let me get our card supplies. So we have a basic white cardstock base, a five and a half by eight and a half. Um, remember all the dimensions are on that PDF tutorial so you don't even have to write anything down. You can pair that project PDF tutorial with this video and um, create the projects this week. So we have a couple of pieces of, design, of cardstock here. We have basic black, pecan pie, lemon lime twist, and basic white. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some stamping around the edge here of our lemon lime twist. Let me get my scrap piece of paper because we may be doing some stamping off. So let me, there we go. So I just wanna cover my workspace and we're gonna use lemon lime twist to do some tone on tone stamping here. We're gonna use the leaf um, stamp. So here, our little leaf. And we're just gonna create our own patterned background. There is no specific way to stamp these. We're just gonna go around the different ways here. And I'm just twisting my stamp as I go around. Now with this um, ink, it will, as it dries, it'll lighten up just a little bit. So you don't have to worry about it being so dark. And we're just twisting our leaves around here to get different patterns. And there we go. Okay. 
Okay, now, put that away, and our leaf away. We are going to emboss our piece of pecan pie cardstock. Now I know some people say pecan, some people say pecan. It really just depends on however you wanna say it. I say pe pecan, <laughs> I have to think about it for a second there. I say pecan, but however you wanna say it. Now I'm gonna be using two of the three embossing folders from the Basics 3D embossing folder set. Now these are online exclusive items only, meaning they're not in our annual catalog. They come three embossing folders to the set and um, the third one is dots. So like kind of larger dots too. So we are gonna use this uh, stars pattern. Technically these embossing folders don't have specific names to them so I named them stars crosses and dots so just for my labeling purposes now on the bottom of all of our embossing folders is this black line so I'm going to use that to line up my piece of cardstock just to make sure that it is straight when I run it through the stamp and cut and emboss machine now these are our normal regular size embossing folders so we have to use the regular sized stamp and cut and emboss machine, the big guy here. Now when you're embossing, because these are 3D embossing folders, on your plate here, it'll tell you exactly the sandwich that you need. So right down here, using 3D embossing folders, you need platform one, which is this. And then we're gonna put our plate, or our folder, and then plate number four, right on top. And we're gonna run them through our machine. Courtney said, so glad those folders came back in stock. Kids gave them to me for Mother's Day. That sounds like the perfect Mother's Day gift. I know my mom's watching. I did not get her this for Mother's Day, but if I was a mother, I'd want embossing folders for Mother's Day. <laughs> All right, so we have our two pieces that we're going to add to our basic black cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I like to use uh, multi-purpose liquid glue when I'm working with embossing folders. This ensures that, I tested this right before I went online too. Let's see if this one works any better. Um, this will ensure that your embossing folders, nope, come on, I think I have, I call them glue buggies. They get stuck in the, there we go. Um, so the liquid glue helps get into the creases of your cardstock. Case in point, I received this card and they had used stamp and seal adhesive and you could see how much this just peels right off the front. So if you are using embossing folders, use multi-purpose liquid glue. It'll help it stick to your cardstock a little bit better than stamp and seal adhesive. <laughs> My mom said she didn't because her mom isn't as creative as she is. You're creative, mom. Yes, you are. You do lots of sewing and I cannot sew. All right, we added our pecan pie cardstock to our basic black and now we're gonna add our lemon lime twist right on top. And with our embellishment of the week, our linen thread, we're gonna take three pieces that are just a little bit longer than our uh, basic black cardstock and we're gonna wrap these around the back. So it's gonna kind of uh, cover up, here's our project card, we're gonna cover up that seam where the two colors meet. So it just creates a way to make it look a little nicer where the two pieces really come together. So we've got our three pieces here, and this is where we're gonna use some stamp and seal adhesive on the back. So we're gonna flip this over, find out where the seams are, so right about here, and we're gonna add a bit, let's add just a little bit more, of stamp and seal adhesive. So I'm gonna take one end and we're gonna place it right where that stamp and seal is and then run it across and attach to the other side of stamp and seal. Same thing, but this one's gonna go a little bit lower 
right below our last piece and it's going to get wrapped around the front and attached and then our last piece is going to go on top of the first one you don't want to pull too hard or you'll release it from the stamp and seal and then there so you have your and then you can kind of shift the um, thread right across the front now we really want to get that to stay um, so even though the stamp and seal is sticky it can come apart sometimes with this thread so I'm just gonna take two pieces of washi tape any size washi tape will do and I'm just going to thread my washi tape right over those three pieces and this will help really secure it and keep it in place. Barb asks, where did I get the pink stand for my glue? That's an awesome little stand. So this is from um, a local scrapbook store um, here in, well, it was in Phoenix, but these are 3D printed and you can go on Etsy and just search uh, Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue holder and you will find plenty of little 3D glue holders. So that's a really fun thing and it, it keeps all the glue towards the tip and makes it really easy to be able to get the glue out. Thank you, Diane. I was excited to be home. It was nice to sleep in my own bed for once. Um, I was not excited about um, having to wear a coat in June. <laughs> it was cold, but I, I enjoyed coming back to Arizona and donning my flip-flops and, um, you know, not having to wear a heavy coat and jeans and gloves and hat. So it was very nice to be able to um, come home to some warmer weather. All right, so we're going to place our paper there. Now we have this bow here, and all I did is I took two pieces of the ribbon and we're gonna tie this into a bow. And there. Okay, and I'm just gonna take the thread and pull it through my fingers and thumb just to help it straighten out because it's kind of curly. Now I probably cut too much here, but I'd rather have more than have to cut again. But I'm just gonna tie these into a bow if this cooperates. Let's see, let's make it work again. Let's retie. So we got our two pieces of thread and wrap. There we go, and pull. So we've got our little ribbon here. I'm just gonna pull that tight and cut the ends all together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a mini glue dot on the back of that so it looks like we tied the, the bow onto these three pieces of um, thread, but it's really a faux, uh, a faux bow, let's call it that. <laughs> Wondered how you warm weather people would do it in the colder temperatures. So Peggy, I am originally from Iowa. Um, so I, I grew up with cold. So I, I mean, it was only like high 40s, low 50s. So it, it wasn't like extreme cold. Um, but I, I had a coat, I had a hat and gloves and all that stuff. But you know, when you live in the land of 100 degrees every day, basically, it is definitely, <laughs> it was a little colder than what I had uh, envisioned for vacation, but it, it was still, still so much fun. All right, we're going to take our Lemon Lolly car, uh, ink pad and our pecan pie, and we're going to create a little sentiment piece here. Um, we're going to create some banana backgrounds and a sentiment that says I'm bananas about you. So it's kind of hard to see on the sample card. Oh, I almost did the wrong one. But all I did was just like our lemon lime twist, 
I took our banana stamp here and just kind of went around creating my own. Oh, I dropped that one. There we go. I just created my own kind of like background pieces. So a lemon lolly is very light, but it's not as light as so saffron. I really like lemon lolly more than so saffron, which we used to have. All right, pecan pie we're gonna use. It says, I'm bananas about you. We're gonna stamp that onto our piece. And then we're just gonna cut a tail at the bottom here. Watching as I grill dinner. Ooh, Cindy, what are you making? Yum. It's too hot to grill here right now. I don't know what I'm having for dinner just yet. All right, and we're gonna cut our little tail there. Now we're gonna insert this, kind of tuck it under our thread that we have here. So again, multi-purpose liquid glue because we're working with embossed cardstock. And that's just gonna tuck right under there. So you don't wanna push it too far, you just want it to slide right under there and then become flush with that. All right, we're going to make our monkey now. And I had some white cardstock. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. I put it off to the side because I was going to put it away. But and then I remembered I needed it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna stamp our monkey and then we're gonna punch him out with the coordinating punch. So we need the stamp that will work. You can see all my, I pre put all my stamps on the blocks just so I have everything ready to go. Um, but then they stick together. So what we're going to do is for our monkey, normally when I'm using Stampin' Blends, which we're going to use, normally I would use Tuxedo Black Memento ink, but we are going to use Early Espresso ink for the monkey. We kind of want the, um, brown early espresso to blend a little with our stamp and blends so it's okay if he is in early espresso and not tuxedo black so we've got that and we're going to color in with stamp and blends now what i'm using is we're going to be using pecan pie and crumb cake for him so here's our sample so you can see how i colored him in we're gonna use the light crumb cake for the face and I'm gonna avoid the eyes, but color in the rest of his face. And the ears, the little um, inside of the ears here, we're gonna use light pecan pie And then the rest of him is going to be dark pecan pie. So um, really a good use of a Stampin' Blend in a way that we're not blending the colors together. I found that these are the best two colors, well, crumb cake and pecan pie, for this little monkey guy. So we're just going to quickly color him in with the blends. As I get close to his body, it's easier to use the bullet end rather than the brush end. I was using the brush end there and I kind of got out of bounds a little bit. So the bullet end is going to be the best option for his little legs, arms, and his tail. And I'm just doing kind of a rough color, but you can see how easy it is to really color him in all together. All right, put our blend away for a minute and our punch. So the Monkey Builder Punch, I like to always stamp first and then you can line up the punch in there. There you can see it's all lined up and then I'm gonna flip it over so that the pieces don't fly halfway across my craft room. And there is 
our punched out monkey. He's so cute. I This was one of the first sets that I got when the catalog went live. I really wanted this set and um, our punch bundles have been super popular lately. So I wanted to make sure that I got one in case it sold out or anything. But I'm gonna add some dimensionals to the back and just put them right there. And that is our first card today with the little monkey bundle. Very cute stamp set uh, and coordinating punch. I love this set. Um, and that's our first project. Very fun with the embossing at the bottom, giving it a little bit of texture there as well. All right, our second card here is the one that uses lemon lolly. Now it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to put it a little closer, but the background here is where I embossed using that second embossing folder from the trio of folders from that online exclusive. All right, Veronica. So Veronica, I actually thought of you when I was making these projects because I know that you call your son Little Monkey and all I could think of was how uh, you call him that and these projects made me think of you. So um, I know you have this set. You said you haven't used it yet, but um, I thought of you when I was making these. All right, so we have our Lemon Lolly cardstock. A, a brand new color from our new annual catalog. And we have a piece of copper clay designer series paper. So this is one of our newest in colors. So it's a little different than pecan pie. Copper clay has more of a reddish tone to it, um, but it pairs really well with the pecan pie Stampin' Blends. Um, I wanted to just use um, like two colors of Stampin' Blends, so all the monkeys kind of looked the same over all three cards. Um, but I do have the copper clay Stampin' Blends, but they were just a little too um, like orangey, brownish orange for the monkey. So I went with Pecan Pie for the Stampin' Blends, but this paper is um, copper clay. All right, so we're gonna emboss our smaller piece of Lemon Lolly cardstock with that second embossing folder. Here is that, uh, like I said, I, I named this one Cross even though it really doesn't have a specific name to it. I'm gonna use that black line again to line up my cardstock at the bottom just to make sure everything is straight. And once again, we're gonna use the big stamp and cut an emboss machine. If you are um, eyeballing this machine and it's on your wish list, this can be um, added to your starter kit plus. So you can get this machine and a die set or these embossing folders for your um, Stampin' Up! starter kit. All right, so we have our, it's the last time we're using that. So good shoulder work out there. Um, we have our uh, designer or our cardstock embossed there. It's kind of hard to see. Like if I just put it flat like this, you can't really see it. So I have to kind of hold it sideways so you guys can see. The lighter papers don't really show up very well um, when you emboss them. But if I hold it sideways, you can see against the light there. All right, we're going to use our multi-purpose liquid glue to adhere this down to our card base. Sure. I think this one's dying too. I need to get more of my liquid glue out. Here we go. And you're just going to kind of hold it down just to make sure the fibers of the paper kind of adhere with each other. There we go. Now we have two project pieces here. We have our copper clay designer series paper. Now this is our new two and three eighths inch circle punch. So um, that I already pre-punched and we're gonna stamp our monkey again in early espresso. There we go. And we have the hanging monkey this time. And the sentiment that says, just swinging by to say hi. We're also gonna use the open banana and this time we're going to use um, daffodil delight 
stamp and blends i could have used lemon lolly but i wanted my banana to be darker than my cardstock so daffodil delight and then again um crumb cake and pecan pie for the, the monkey all right let's stamp our where'd the circle go <laughs> there it is we're gonna stamp our circle first and i'm just gonna bring in a spare piece of paper because his tail is gonna hang off the edge again in early espresso so just kind of angle him a little bit there we go oh while i have this open i'm going to stamp my sentiment as well because that is in early espresso as well as just saying swinging by to say hi now this is a spare piece of basic white cardstock because i'm just going to fussy cut around the words a little bit there um, this stamp set, while it has a punch, it doesn't have any other type of coordinating dies to go with it. Um, but the sentiments are very easy to cut around. So, uh, we're going to do that as well. All right, let's color in the, oh, I forgot to stamp this banana. There we go. Early espresso as well. Make sure the banana peels down and I'm just going to pull this. I may go off camera. I just want to make sure the banana is right in his hand there all right we're gonna color in so the inside of the banana is gonna be the light daffodil delight the outside is gonna be dark daffodil delight so then you have your two-toned banana in the peel the monkey is going to be I think I used dark again on this one. So we're gonna color in the dark here. Pecan pie is what this is. Now I did not color in the inside of the ears on this one. I just colored the whole monkey except the face. Uh, you could do the inside as well with the light and the dark pecan pie, but I just did, this one is a little different than the last one. Just gonna color it in again using the bullet end of the marker just to kind of get into these smaller spaces a little bit better and the legs you've got the tail and the other leg here oh went outside a little bit there that's okay as I say craft happens that's how you know it's homemade even the most advanced stampers sometimes go outside the lines. <laughs> and for our face, we're gonna use light crumb cake again. There we go. And now we can add that to our card. So we have our piece of copper clay and we're just going to cut a little flag into the end of this here there we go and we're going to add this to our card base hi carol how are you thank you for watching i hope you had a wonderful monday and our monkey piece is going to go on with dimensionals And that will go right over our piece of copper clay. There. And then for our sentiment, like I said, we're just going to fussy cut this out. Now you could, um, you know, just cut it, square it off, but I wanted to do something a little different. I didn't want this to be squared off. I wanted to give some of the sentiment to be a little more rounded. Now. Again, you can see how quick and easy it is to fussy cut this out, but if fussy cutting is not your thing, you can just easily cut the sentiment into more a squared off piece. Go around here and around there. Need some of this off our workspace. And then this is just going to get adhered with liquid glue 
into our lower corner there. Our embellishment of the week, our linen thread. We're just gonna tie one piece of this into a bow. And you can see it gets all curly, so you just pull it and it'll straighten it out. Makes it much easier to tie once it's straight and not all curled up. There we go. And this is gonna go on with a mini glue dot. You don't wanna use liquid glue for these just because it is so thin. Uh, mini glue dot is your best option for adhering these down to your card. And I just like to roll it into a little ball, put it on the back of my thread, and then it can go right there. Now as a final touch for this project, I'm gonna use, these are the new in color dots. Uh, they come in all of our five new in colors, Pebble Path, Wild Wheat, Moody Mauve, uh, Copper Clay, and Boho Blue, three different sizes for each color. And we are gonna use the Copper Clay. That's why I used the Copper Clay Designer Series paper. And then this just kind of ties it all together with that color as well. Now these dots are a little tricky to peel up. So your take your pick tool is the best option to get these off. So we're gonna put two of the small dots um, to the right side of the card and then one smaller on the left. And that is our second project with the little monkey bundle. So cute. I love the lemon lolly with this. It goes really well with that banana color. Um, and that is our second card. So very, very fun. Uh, Courtney likes it. She said another stinking cute card. Thank you. Very fun to create that one as well. All right, our last card here features, we've got two little monkey guys on this one with some old olive cardstock and old olive Stampin' Blends. So we have a piece of old olive cardstock, uh, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Again, don't forget those measurements are on that PDF, so you don't have to write any of this down. We've got a piece of basic white cardstock and a piece of pecan pie. This is die cut with the Stylish Shapes dies. Now these come in banners, circles, squares. So if you're looking for a great all around uh, die cut bundle, this is probably my number one go-to die set that I reach for when I plan projects. So um, with those different shapes, it has the stitching all around all of them. So it's a very uh, versatile uh, bundle it, or dies if you're looking for a die set to have. All right, let's grab our uh, piece of scratch paper and we're going to create our own pattern background here. And this uses the, there's like a, a fern stamp in here and we're gonna use um, old olive ink. So what we're gonna do is like, just like our other projects that we've created, we're just going to stamp the fern all the way around. I love being able to create my own pattern paper, especially with uh, these projects that don't have any coordinating designer series paper to go with them. So creating your own pattern background paper, you can see how easy it is. Um, you use supplies that you already have, just some basic white cardstock, some ink, and you create your own fun backgrounds here. So just a couple more, and then you can see how easy it is to create that. They're monkeying around. <laughs> That's funny. I, I posted these projects on my Instagram page earlier, and I used the... Um, Hey, hey, we're the monkeys song to go along with it. So I thought that was like the perfect background song. Now we're gonna use the uh, light old olive stamp and blends um, to just color in certain ferns. Now we don't wanna color all of them in just because we want the pattern paper to not just be so heavy in the background. So just like kind of every other fern we're gonna color in. So this one down here, 
and let's see this row here so I'm just kind of going like every other quote row so we have this is a row row here and I'm just gonna color in these very easy to color with their stamp and blends this is the light old olive again you're supposed to use tuxedo black memento ink with these but I'm doing some tone on tone coloring with old olive ink and let's see let's color this one in lots of coloring today normally I don't do this much coloring on a maker's Monday but it's fun I love coloring with Stampin' Blends and it's easy too there we go and I'm just kind of rough coloring these in these ones aren't perfect but you get the idea of coloring in the ferns. You always want to make sure your workspace is covered when working with Stampin' Blends. That's why I have my grid paper there. So there we go. Just kind of a random uh, coloring of all the different leaves that we have there. Now I'm also, while I have my scratch paper out, we're going to stamp our monkeys and we're going to color them in. Just like our first one, we're going to punch these out as well. So the same monkey we used before. We're going to use our early espresso ink. There we go. And pecan and crumb for our monkeys there. So this one I used a light crumb cake to color in the ear. So the first project we used light pecan pie. The second one I didn't color in the ears. This one I'm coloring in with light crumb cake to match the face. So there's a couple of varieties of ways to be able to color these monkeys in. You can really uh, kind of mix and match however you want to color them in. There, there is no certain rhyme or reason to be able to do it a certain way. It's whatever is speaking to you at the moment. The only thing I did was I avoided coloring in, hopefully you guys can see that, let me move it up. Uh, I avoided coloring in the eyes. So the rest of it, I'm just coloring in the eyes. I'm just leaving white, All right? And then we're just, why don't we just use light pecan on these guys so you can see the difference. So just kind of quick here. Hello, Debbie. Hi, Zoe. Thanks for watching. We have lots of Arizona people here tonight, not just from Tucson either. We have Casa Grande or Casa Grande, however you want to say it. Uh, Safford, Arizona. Welcome. So we're just coloring in our monkeys here. These are so fun. my husband's home so hopefully the dogs don't go crazy he's pulling into the driveway right now all right and our monkey and the body same thing on this guy try to color him in a little quicker because you got the gist from the first one. Here we go. All right, now we're gonna punch these out with our monkey punch. Lining them up once you have it all lined up. Kind of semi punch you don't want to punch it all the way through but you want to flip and then punch that'll help make sure that all those little pieces don't kind of fly across your craft room and then you just can contain everything right there great we have our two monkeys and then we just need to stamp our sentiment and we can assemble so we have our pecan pie now this time I am gonna use tuxedo black ink I just want the sentiment to stand out a little bit more from that piece of darker paper so our little monkey 
will go right there in the middle. Now we are going to attach, it's a little hard to see, but you can see there's this ribbon here. This is our wild wheat three eighths of an inch uh, textured ribbon. This is our uh, one of our new end colors. So how we're gonna attach this is I'm gonna take my ribbon and just measure a little bit longer than my sentiment piece. And we're gonna trim that off. Now this ribbon tends to fray a little bit quicker than some of our others. So I'm just gonna trim these at an angle. And what we're gonna do is take our stamp and seal adhesive and a strip along the back of our sentiment piece. We're gonna add our ribbon right across there. And then on this, we're gonna add Stampin' Dimensionals. So we've got our piece of old olive cardstock, and now all we have to do is assemble. So old olive with our stamped piece here, and because this is not embossed. I can use my stamp and seal adhesive right across the front here. There we go. Our sentiment piece we're gonna put on first. So we have that and we just need our dimensionals on the back. And then it we have an easy way with our stamp and seal holding that ribbon on and then it just kind of peeks through right there. Now our two little monkeys, we're gonna add our multi-purpose liquid glue on and this is gonna go right there behind our sentiment and then right here as well. They're gonna be kind of holding hands a little bit right there. So they're gonna be tucked behind our sentiment piece, just like that. Now we're gonna tie two pieces of our twine. Where's the end? There we go. Two pieces of our twine into a bow and add that. This is way too much thread, but that's okay. I think I buy these things in like multiples because it's my favorite. I use it so much on projects. And we're just gonna tie into our bow. There we go. And then you can trim all the edges or the, the tails all at the same time. We're gonna here with a glue dot. Oh, my take your pick tool keeps coming apart. I'm not exactly sure if it got loosened somehow or it won't stay locked anymore. Probably because I use it all the time. <laughs> and as a final touch, we're also gonna add some of these little dots in wild wheat. So because I only have one of the small ones left, we're gonna use the medium size. And two right there and one right down there for our final project today featuring the little monkeys stamp set. So I hope you guys liked our three projects today. Let me bring them all back and you can let me know which one is your favorite. We have our old olive monkeys, our lemon lolly, and then our lemon lime twist. So let me know which one you guys like the most. I have to say, I think the lemon or the lemon lolly one is my favorite today with, you know, they're all kind of the same. I really like all of them, but the lemon lolly is definitely my favorite today. But let me know in the comments, which one is your favorite this week? All right, so well, thank you everybody for joining me for another week of Makers Monday featuring the Little Monkey Bundle. Uh, as a reminder, if you're wanting to register for June's Club Craft and Create, June 8th, this coming Thursday, is the deadline to register for that. The information is in the link in the description of this video. Don't forget BOGO is coming up this weekend in person and virtually, so make sure to check that out. And if you're wanting to create this week's Makers Monday projects, 
Thursday is the deadline to place your order to receive this week's project kit for free. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you next time.